I've never sexually assaulted anyone, not in high school, not in college, not ever. But I swear today, under oath, before the Senate and the nation, before my family and God, I am innocent of this charge. So there he is saying he's innocent. So I had the very um, unique opportunity of watching this um, this uh, hearing, well, parts of it anyway, on mainstream media yesterday in a very mixed crowd. I was in this place where there's all kinds of kinds of you know people, and uh, I had to bite my tongue quite a bit at, uh, at times. But the most the most important thing about the way I watched it and what I saw on mainstream media, like everybody else was that uh, the, the, the obvious one-sided um, display by the, the mainstream media. They didn't show the parts, at least in the television that I was watching, didn't show the parts that I'm going to show now, which was Kavanaugh's, uh, Judge Kavanaugh's opening statement where he makes the case for himself and against the Senate, which was it's just, I mean, it's just staggering. Stagger, staggeringly interesting stuff. So I want to also say that um, I don't support Kavanaugh as a as a uh, congressional judge for the reasons of that he's a corporatist. He's he's for oligarchy. He's for money in politics. He doesn't stand against it. Citizens United, other laws that allow corporatization to run amok and Kavanaugh is just a run-of-the-mill in my view judge that would allow those things to stay exactly in place in fact you know uh, uh, they'll be on steroids after a guy like this gets in that said in terms of the social issues that the loony left is is arguing about abortion and all that stuff I don't think that uh, I don't have any opinion of that I think that uh, that those laws like uh, Roe v. Wade and you know other gay marriage and all those all these these um, uh, deeply interesting subjects to, to a lot of people are not in the balance at all. They're not in jeopardy. These are laws that these are rights and laws that have already been uh, it's already it's already established laws as as Trump has always said. It's established law. We're not going to go near it, right? So anyway, but um, so so here we go. We have a corporatist judge. He's being smeared by the left, right? Is he? Is it a smear job? It appears to be, yeah. Something that happened 35 years ago, right? But let's listen to the judge. I mean, again, I, I talk too much, so I'm gonna let's listen to let's listen to the judge, in his own words, make the case. I am deeply grateful to President Trump for nominating me. He was so gracious to my family and me on the July night. He announced my nomination at the White House. I thank him for his steadfast support. This whole two-week effort has been a calculated and orchestrated political hit, fueled with apparent pent-up anger about President Trump and the 2016 election fear that has been unfairly stoked about my judicial record, revenge on behalf of the Clintons, reported breathlessly and often uncritically by the media. In ninth grade, this confirmation process has become a national disgrace. The Constitution gives the Senate an important role in the confirmation process, but you have replaced advice and consent with search and destroy. You have replaced advice and consent with search and destroy. Wow, it's powerful. Right? He's really, he really, I mean, he, he gives kudos to Trump for picking him. <laughs> of course he has to. But, but uh, he, he, um, he really, he attacks the media. He makes this incredible proclamation that, that, uh, that the media in somehow is implicated in <clears throat> this smear job. 
But what he doesn't talk about is where does the money come from? That's what I, that's my the focus of my work is that he's telling you he's telling you uh, he's telling you the problem. He's getting a, a hit, you know, he's getting hit hard from the loony left, right? And and is actually making a case for the Democrats because now you have a judge who knows what that that hit feels like, you know? They actually made a case for him because now he's a good judge to have because he knows how how that that smear that that on that that all out assault on your character wrongfully what it feels like. Right? He's a, now he's an expert on that too. So uh, let's keep listening. Since my nomination in July, there's been a frenzy on the left to come up with something, anything, to block my confirmation. Shortly after I was nominated, the Democratic Senate leader said he would, quote, oppose me with everything he's got. A Democratic senator on this committee publicly, publicly referred to me as evil. Evil. Think about that word. And said that those who supported me were, quote, complicit in evil. Another Democratic senator on this committee said, quote, Judge Kavanaugh is your worst nightmare. A former head of the Democratic National Committee said, quote, Judge Kavanaugh will threaten the lives of millions of Americans for decades to come. I understand the passions of the moment, but I would say to those senators, your words have meaning. Millions of Americans listened carefully to you. Given comments like those, is it any surprise that people have been willing to do anything to make any physical threat against my family, to send any violent email to my wife, to make any kind of allegation against me and against my friends, to blow me up and take me down? Look, he makes the case for a total onslaught, a, a a total smear job from the left. Makes it he makes the case effectively. That's what's going on, right? This is politics, right? It's politics. It's it's sowing the seeds of division in America, right? The the alleged voters. But again, we don't have free and fair elections. They're not actual elections, their selection processes. But nonetheless, they're sowing the seeds of consent for the stealing of those elections. Because once they have the consent, then they can go in there and do the fucking rig and take it out the take out the monkey wrench and go fucking rent, you know, and rig the machines and, and win. But he makes the case that it is partisan politics what's going on here. Right? Left fights the right because this this judge is viewed as a right judge, right? And these guys, remember? See, see, it's different now. See, now you could take the picture of Conti in an Obama hat, right? And say, oh, look, Conti's a liberal left, right? But, but what happens if I'm wearing this hat? <laughs> now I'm making America great again. So now I'm your friend, right? Because I'm wearing an America, uh, I'm making America great again hat. It's partisan politics, right? Okay, look at that shit, man. I love this fucking hat. Man. I love this hat, right? So it's all about politics. It's all about sowing division. And who's doing it? <clears throat> it's the oligarchs. It's the it's the, the corporations. It's they now own this guy because they've compromised him. They've made him scared. <clears throat> he knows the power of the money. He's talking about it. He's saying, you know, all your money and all your might, and you're trying to destroy me and smear me and fucking right. He's making the case for the oligarchy, right? And um does my hat look? Right, so it's, um, let's keep watching. And then, and then, as no doubt was expected, if not planned, came a long series of false last minute smears designed to scare me and drive me out of the process before any hearing occurred. Crazy stuff, gangs, illegitimate children, fights on boats in Rhode Island, all nonsense reported breathlessly 
and often uncritically by the media. This has destroyed my family and my good name, a good name built up through decades of very hard work and public service at the highest levels of the American government. Fear that has been unfairly stoked about my judicial record, revenge on behalf of the Clintons, and millions of dollars in money from outside left-wing opposition groups. See, the money flows into politics, right? <clears throat> Where there used to be a constitution, it, the money flows down. Right? There used to be a constitution that would rain down on Congress and Senate, right? And the judicial and the executive branch, right? And the constitution was the rain that would, would fertilize the whole process. But see, now what we have is we have this oligarchy. It's dollars and cents. It's money that rains down on all of these powers. The Supreme Court is being attacked. A candidate for the Supreme Court is being viscerally attacked by the legislative branch, who is responsible for confirming him. But that's not the point. It's that, it's that the money in politics has has dissolved the separations of power. You have, you're supposed to have executive, you're supposed to have judicial, and you're supposed to have legislative. And there are three powers of government that are supposed to keep each other in check. But because of the money in politics, you have this, this um, breakdown in that, in that system. Right? It's important to know that because that's the, if you want to solve these problems, I don't know, drain the swamp. I'll take out my, my fucking Make America Great Again hat, right? And we'll drain the swamp, but you'll, you won't get rid of the problem. The problem is the money in politics, the smear job. The, the, this, is, this is brilliant, brilliant, brilliant testimony from a, a judge who is going to sit on the Supreme Court. He has the, the votes. This allegation of that because they don't like his politics... Why don't why doesn't why don't the lib the liberals like his politics? Is it really because he's anti-woman and anti, you know, abortion or anti-gay or anti-pot or whatever whatever it is they're saying? I don't even know because it's so ridiculous. But it's not. It has nothing to do with those. It has to do with the money. It has to do with the donors that give to the Democrats, right? own those Democrats, and they own the voting opinion of those Democrats, right? So the Democrats come up with a strategy they use to, to, to rile up the loony left. You find a woman, right, 35 years ago, 32 years ago, whatever, and then get her up there and, 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 and go in front of the Senate committee, right? Forget about the – forget about – because we don't have any due process anymore. Just take the woman, throw her up in front of the Senate, and let the whole country decide. Right, based on circumstantial evidence, based on no due process, no vetting, no screening, no nothing. Just take this this vague testimony like it's like like it's like Hollywood, you know, it's like watch this movie and then decide, you know, without this this one sided, jaded, paid for paid for woman get up there and, and spoo. Right? It's money in politics causes this to happen. And there's no there's no um evidence in this judge's testimony, his presentation that suggests that he even understands that or gives a shit about it or will will address it. He thinks it's the other side of the aisle, right? Which it is, but why is it the other side of the aisle? Because they're taking money from donors who want things a certain way. And the Republicans take money from donors that want things a different way. But it's the same, the same donors benefiting. This argument, the point is that this argument in politics today has nothing to do with us, which is why I've never even talked about a Supreme Court pick, because this guy, it's just a good shit show to watch, because it's really interesting. Some of the things he exposes... And, uh, you know, a judge viscerally attacking uh, the Senate like this and senators. It's just spectacular stuff, you know. It's, it's very, very, it's going to be very memorable for 
for years to come because he will be on the bench. He will sit. There's, it's very, I mean, it's, again, it has nothing, all of this, you can have a woman get up there and say, you know, that she was, that, that, that they raped my ass and, and they passed me around like a joint. And it wouldn't matter because the Republican side of the aisle will just go along with it anyway. They, they, they've already, the decision is already made. Right? But now that this guy is owned, that's, that's very interesting too. He, he's owned now because they've put the fear of God in this guy. He knows that he 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 he's he understands viscerally what the attack feels like, right? So now he'll just go along with it, right? He's he's more apt to go along with it, to defend his family and all the pain that you've put my family and friends through and my career, because that's what he is, he's a careerist, right? So now that now that the corporations own this guy, right, right, he's 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 compromised in in a lot of senses. In, in a lot of respects. He shouldn't have been, in my view, right, it shouldn't have really affected him at all. Why is he so surprised that the money, you know, a, a, attacked him? I, I just say that he does not attack the root cause of the problem, which is the money in politics. He says it's these left-wing conspirators yeah, they are, but where's again, always follow the money. So let, let's just watch his closing statement. And all. This is a circus. The consequences will extend long past my nomination. The consequences will be with us for decades. This grotesque and coordinated character assassination will dissuade competent and good people of all political persuasions from serving our country. And as we all know, in the United States political system of the early 2000s, what goes around comes around. I am an optimistic guy. I always try to be on the sunrise side of the mountain, to be optimistic about the day that is coming. But today, I have to say that I fear for the future. Last time I was here, I told this committee that a federal judge must be independent, not swayed by public or political pressure. I said I was such a judge, and I am. I will not be intimidated into withdrawing from this process. You've tried hard. You've given it your all. No one can question your effort. But your coordinated and well-funded effort to destroy my good name and destroy my family will not drive me out. The vile threats of violence against my family will not drive me out. You may defeat me in the final vote, but you'll never get me to quit. Never. We live in a country devoted to due process and the rule of law. That means taking allegations seriously. But if the mere allegation, the mere assertion of an allegation, a refuted allegation from 36 years ago, is enough to destroy a person's life and career, we will have abandoned the basic principles of fairness and due process that define our legal system and our country. He talks about fairness and due process as being the, the foundation of, a, of our, our legal system. But we don't have that anymore. That's the that is the point, right? We saw with the Clinton Foundation. We saw with the Clintons how they cheated and lied and possibly killed people and and all the hard election fraud and 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 it possibly treason and murder, the Clintons, right? And there's no due process. It's all politics. It's all right. And here you got he you got you've got a judge under attack our system is under attack it's been it's not even under attack it's been seized and there's evidence all over the place right where where a judge that because the corporations own the media they can pull this rabbit out of their hat uh, some woman from 35 years ago suddenly 
comes out and says, "Oh, he he, him and his friend gang raped me when 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 I was a child, at a pool party, and he and he they they wrestled me to the ground, and and there's just well you know there's a due process for that, right? There's due process, and and that was thirty something years ago, and it's highly suspicious that any of that matters, and I'd love, we'd like to see your bank accounts to see exactly who paid for this this um, exaggerated story of something that may have happened in in some form or another. Maybe the guy was at a party. But I'd like to see the bank accounts and see who paid this woman off to do it, right? to say that stuff, right? So this is, this is wonderful stuff in my view that it, it has, it exposes, it exposes the, the, the uh, disease, right? It doesn't expose, in my view, the cause of the disease, which is, that's my function, to tell you what the cause of the disease is, right? It shows you the disease. It shows you the corruption and the, the, the power of the, of the almighty dollar, how corporations that own the media can pull this rabbit out of their hat and present this case to the, to the sleepy masses where 80% of the people don't even know what the issues are. They just watch the television and, and they, they, they wait for the television to tell them what to think, right? Critical thinking has been suspended, which is one of the reasons why I, I leave the comments in my videos open because it allows you to, I'm trying to tell people that critical thinking has been suspended. When I put up a stupid video, people think like, oh, there's, it's like, well, what, you can't discern from fact and fiction anymore. Most people can't do it. They don't, they need someone to tell them what's going on. There's no more, there's no moral compass anymore, right? There's no center. People have lost their center, center of gravity, emotional, psychological, mental sense of, of what is right and wrong. Because they're trained to look out rather than in. Critical thinking has been suspended. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Hear the cat? Come on up, cat. Walk up. Say say goodbye. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Hello, cat. Speak now. Come on, you're in the microphone. Oh. This is Cat. Cats know more about life than we do, I think. I think animals are smarter, in a, in a sense. This cat's 17 years old. She's been with me for 17 years. My friend. 17 years. This is what's important in life right here. All the other shit doesn't really matter. Right? That you get to, you get to that that I am, have the unique and fortunate. I am fortunate to be able to stay home and at this moment in time and play with my cat, my seventeen-year-old cat. My name is Marcus Conti. Peace out. I am innocent of this charge.